So at the end of the last video, I claimed I'd be talking about melodic sequencing and voices, but I was lying. And instead, today, we are going to be discussing the secondary mono submix, this guy right here, and rhythmic chopping techniques with the ModCan Dual Delay and Harvestman Time Safari Mark II. The first channel on the mono submix is the audio output channel of the ModCan CV record, which we explored in depth during the last patch notes. The second channel is the mix output of the Harvestman Time Safari Mark II. The third channel is the output of the first channel of the ModCan Dual Delay. And the fourth channel is the Q output from the WMD Performance Mixer. This secondary mono submix functions primarily as a complementary layer to the main stereo submix and the drum submix, providing extra flexibility for routing and utility. The Time Safari and the first channel of the Dual Delay are being fed audio by the WMD Sequential Switch Matrix subsystem, which is currently set up very simply. The first input is the first aux of the WMD Performance Mixer. The second input is the second aux of the Performance Mixer. The third input is a high-pass output from an MMF that receives a copy of the drum bus, and the fourth input is the output of the Malgorithm, which is always receiving input from the first aux of the performance mixer. This gives me a bit of a patch bay for my effects routings. The second output is patched to a Maleco VCA, which then goes to the input of the first channel of the ModCan dual delay, and the fourth output is split and running simultaneously into the CV record channel I'm using for audio capture and into the Time Safari. The first channel of the ModCan dual delay is being synced to the same quad clock divider output that clocks the Zularic repetitor. I usually have it set to a fairly slow division of this incoming clock, and the VCA that is on the input is used to gate audio into the delay. The VCA is receiving CV from the third channel of the launch codes. The feedback CV on the first channel of the ModCan dual delay is being controlled by the fourth channel from the launch codes. Alternately gating the input and the feedback CV of the delay, if everything is configured carefully, can begin to approximate a looping delay, but that's usually not the effect I'm going for. Mainly I want somewhat longer term repeats of chunks of audio that slowly change over time as different chunks of audio get punched into the delay and older chunks slowly decay away. To demo this patch for the ModCan dual delay, let's first take a listen to the audio input we'll be using. Right now, we'll be listening to the meandering, modulated, arpeggiated voice that we used last video with the ModCan CV record. Suitably meandering. So let's take a look at the launch codes and see how we can take chunks of that and feed them into the delay. fourth channel will turn up the feedback. Let's adjust some of the parameters on the delay itself. gate patterns I'm using as CVs and try some new ones. Let's cut in the original dry feed of that synth voice and hear how the layering sounds. Maybe I 
throw on a little bit of the drum bus in the mod can dual delay, mainly higher frequencies. We'll take away the dry melody voice. And now I'm going to adjust some of the clock signals that are moving these things around a bit. Time Safari Mark II is being used in a very similar rhythmic chopping kind of patch, but the structure of the module lends itself to this very easily. I am remotely controlling the direction, loop, record, and play states, which makes the Time Safari periodically overwrite some of the audio in its memory, while also re-triggering and gating the sample playback in a rhythmic fashion. The direction is controlled by the third channel of launch codes, the record state is controlled by the fourth channel of launch codes, which is also the feedback gate for the first channel of the ModCan dual delay. The loop state is controlled by the fifth channel of the launch codes, and the play state is controlled by a gate signal sequenced from the octatrack. All of these signal relationships combine to create very interesting variations on the audio input fed to the Time Safari. To start with on the Time Safari, I have all the switches up so that the direction, loop, play, and record states are all forced to be on, which is to say that the direction is forward, the loop is on, the play state is on, and it is also armed for recording. So in this configuration, it is essentially acting just as a delay. Even though I have signals coming in to control those states, the switches being flipped up overrides those gate inputs. I have a basic melodic voice from the micro braids that I'll use again. We'll take a listen to that in its dry state. Uh, yeah, that, that one. Okay, so let's take a listen to how the Time Safari is producing a feedbacked delay version of that signal. I could adjust the sample rate. Thank <laughs> you. 
Right now, I mostly want to hear it at high quality. Now what I'm going to do is flip all the switches to off, except play. Right now, playback is reversed as the direction switch is off. And if we were to make it loop, maybe get some new audio. Turn down some feedback and record some new stuff in. So now I'm going to clear the part of the Time Safari buffer I've been using. Even though it's playing back, we hear nothing. I'm going to flip all the switches to off, and now these module states are only being controlled externally. Currently, since the launch code has no patterns punched into it, the only signal being activated is the play state being controlled by the Octatrack, and since the buffer is cleared, we hear nothing. Let's punch some audio rhythmically into the Time Safari and see what happens. First, we're going to turn off feedback. That's interesting. Let's start sending some rhythms into the different state controls. Let's turn the feedback up a bit. Let's make it record longer chunks. Let's try a different pattern of playback. Let's change the source voice a little. Let's change the clocks around. Now I'll put some high-pass percussions into the Time Safari as well. And 
now I decide I don't want to put new stuff in the buffer, so I clear the record gate. And now I essentially have a resequenced sample playing back. Now I flip all the switches back to get back to that original feedback delay setting. Thank you. 